I am Anil Kumar and in these set of videos we are going to discuss curve sketching in details. We have a function f of x equals to x over x minus 2 whole square. Let us see how to sketch graph of this function. We can begin with x and y intercepts. y intercept is kind of simpler. y intercept is a point where x is equals to 0. That means we need to find the value where x is 0 that means f of 0. If I substitute 0 here then what do I get? I get 0 over 0 minus 2 whole square and that is indeed 0. So y intercept for us is 0 0. So that is one point. So what we should also do is as we gain information about the graph of our function we'll keep on plotting it simultaneously. That will help us to see how the picture is developing, right? So we got the first point which is also the y-intercept and x-intercept and that is at origin, right? So this is our first point. Now when you observe this equation you see that there is a vertical asymptote, right? So we can go for a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is at x equals to 2, right? So vertical asymptote is at x equals to 2. Since at x equals to 2, denominator is 0, right? So, I mean, x equals to 2, denominator is 0. So how do we find it? Equate the denominator to 0 and solve for it. So we do x minus 2 equals to 0, and that gives us x equals to 2. So what we can do now here is we can plot the vertical asymptote also, which is at 2. Let me sketch a dotted line, vertical dotted line here. So that is, let us say, x equals to 2, right? So we get this vertical asymptote and we'll say that this is x equals to 2, the vertical asymptote. Right, so that point is 2, this is origin for us. Okay, now let us look into the horizontal asymptote. Since the degree of denominator is higher than the numerator, what do you expect? You expect that as x becomes increasingly large, as x approaches infinity, positive or negative, the function approaches 0, correct? So function approaches 0 and therefore we do have a horizontal asymptote and this horizontal asymptote will be y equals to 0, right? So the function approaches 0 as x approaches positive or negative infinity. So let me sketch this also here, showing this dotted line along the x-axis as our horizontal asymptote, correct? So this becomes horizontal asymptote y equals to 0. Now once you find horizontal and vertical asymptotes, it is important to see behavior near the asymptote. So let us now check for both vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote. In vertical asymptote, we'll approach 2 from left and right side and see whether we approach negative infinity or positive infinity, right? So let's check the behavior now. Let me use a different ing to write behavior near asymptote. Right? So, so we'll say behavior near asymptote. So to check the behavior, we'll consider two points, one on the left side and one on the right side. So left side point could be 1.9, right side point could be 2.1. Now if I substitute 1.9 here, it is positive, denominator is also positive, so that approaches positive infinity. If I substitute 2.1 here and here, in that case, it will approach again positive infinity, right? So that is the behavior. What we notice is that the graph of the function moves towards positive infinity when we approach 2 from either side. So you can actually substitute this value here in the calculator and check. So you'll get positively large value, right? We'll do the same calculation for the horizontal asymptote also and try to figure out how will the function approach the horizontal asymptote, whether it goes from above or below. 
slope, right? So in that case, we know horizontal asymptote is zero. So if I substitute a value, let me substitute, let us say minus 100 and plus 100. So minus 100 for us is kind of negative infinity, right? Very large value as compared to 2, minus 100 is extremely large. Denominator you see is positive, but with negative 100, numerator will become negative. So we will approach 0, but from the negative side. So I'm trying to say that this is going to approach like this. Do you see that? From the negative side. But if I substitute 100 in my equation, I'll get again 0, but it'll be from the positive side. Since the numerator is positive, denominator is always positive. So the end behavior is kind of like this. Correct. So what we have here, that we do have x and y intercepts. So the graph could come like this. Now since it is going to approach horizontal asymptote, which is y equals to 0 for negative infinity, it has to turn somewhere. And that turning will lead to a minimum value and also it will lead to change in concavity. So let us now analyze the first and the second derivative, right? So function is given to us. Let us find the first derivative of the function. f prime x will be, we'll apply the quotient rule, square of the denominator, which is x minus 2 to the power of 4. Derivative of x is 1 times x minus 2 whole square. So we get x minus 2 whole square minus x times derivative of this function which is times 2 times x minus 2 right so x minus 2 so that is what you get in the numerator now we can actually simplify this a bit taking x minus 2 common in the numerator let's say x minus 2 is common in the numerator what we get here is x minus 2 from the first term and 2x minus 2x rather from the second term divided by x minus 2 to the power of 4 and here we get x minus 2 times x minus 2x is minus x so we get minus x minus 2 right so that is what you get in the numerator divided by x minus 2 to the power of 4 so this could be further reduced we could actually change this to q correct so we get minus x minus 2 over x minus 2. So that gives us two critical points, right? We'll analyze these two critical points. So the critical points for us are at x equals to plus 2 and x equals to minus 2, right? So plus 2 from here and minus 2 from there. So these are the two critical points for us, right? So we can write from here that the critical points are, so critical points to analyze are at x equals 2 plus minus 2, right? So these are the critical points. Plus 2 will give us undefined derivative and minus 2 will give us 0, right? So these are the two critical points. Let me rewrite this expression as minus of x plus 2 divided by x minus 2 whole cube, correct? So that is the first derivative and that these are the two critical points for us. Now let us analyze these critical points. So analyzing critical points for the first derivative will help us find the maximum or minimum, local maximum minimum. So what we have here is one at minus 2, right? The other one is at plus 2. So we can take a test point on either side of these critical points. It could be minus 3, 0, and 3. So if you analyze the derivative f prime x, then what do you notice? If I substitute minus 3 here, then the numerator will be negative. As far as the denominator is concerned, that will also be negative. So we got 1, 2, and 3 negatives resulting into negative when you multiply and divide, correct? So that means at this point, since the derivative is negative, the function itself is kind of decreasing. Do you see that? If I substitute 0 here, 
then in that case I will get negative divided by negative which is positive so so at this point derivative is positive so the function will be increasing right so we have a local minimum at minus 2 right now if I substitute 3 here numerator is going to be positive denominator is also going to be positive 3 minus 2 but this is negative so the function will be decreasing right you can see if I am approaching from infinity to 0 the function is indeed decreasing so it helps us to understand that part however there is no local maximum here since we have a vertical asymptote so don't get confused about it but we did find a local minimum right so we do have a local minimum and that is at minus 2 so what we can do here is we can find the value of the function at minus 2 so if I substitute minus 2 what do I get right so let me write down f of minus 2 and calculate so f of minus 2 is equals to minus 2 divided by if I substitute minus 2 here minus 2 minus 2 whole square which is minus 4 square so I mean so it becomes minus 2 over 16 right that is minus 1 over 8 so that means we do have a local minimum at x equals to minus 2 and the y value is minus 1 over 8 right so kind of let us say let us say this is minus 2 for us so the local minimum is somewhere there right so that is how we can find the local minimum for the given function now to find concavity change in concavity we'll find the second derivative of this function so the second derivative of the function is will start from here so the derivative is minus x plus 2 over x minus 2 whole cube second derivative will be square of the denominator which is x minus 2 to the power of 6 uh, now we can take we will use minus x minus 2 it'll be kind of simpler so the derivative of minus x minus 2 is minus 1 so that is negative times x minus 2 whole cube minus the function itself which is minus x minus 2 times derivative of denominator which is 3 times x minus 2 whole square times the derivative which is 1 so that is the second derivative correct now we can actually simplify this also so let me simplify by taking x minus 2 whole square common right so we'll take x minus 2 whole square common we could also take negative common okay let's take negative also common so in that case in the bracket i get x minus 2 and here we took negative x minus 2 whole square as common so we are left with three times so we, these are both now negative right so three times that means we can write this as minus 3x and minus 6 correct so you could expand this and write divided by x minus 2 to the power of 6 let's simplify this so that gives us uh, here x minus 3x is 2x and minus 6 minus 2 is minus 8 so what we have here is we could actually cancel this factor and get 4 here it becomes plus 2x and minus minus 8 plus 8 right that divided by x minus 2 to the power of 4 so that is that is what we get once you simplify clearly here the critical number for us is when numerator is 0 and when denominator is 0 right so the critical number to analyze is at x equals to minus 4 and at x equals to plus 2 so now let us analyze the second derivative so we'll analyze the second derivative to find concavity right so we'll take the points take the points uh, minus 4 let's say this is now for us minus 4 and plus 2 is here so the test points could be let us say minus 5 0 and 3 if I substitute minus 5 here we know denominator is positive to the power of 4 minus 5 will give us negative value correct so at this portion it is negative 
negative means concave down correct negative means concave down if I substitute 0 here I get plus 8 positive means concave up so that is positive if I substitute 3 again I get positive value over just concave up now since the concavity is changing at minus 4 we do have point of inflection at minus 4 so let us find the value of the function at minus 4 substitute here so f of minus 4 is equals to minus 4 divided by minus 4 minus 2 whole square right which is minus 4 divided by uh, 6 squared is 36 that is minus 1 over 9 right so it is minus 1 over 9 correct slightly smaller than that so kind of somewhere here right so at minus 4 so now what we can do is we know our point of inflection let us say this is minus 4 for us at this point so the concavity changes at this point right now with all this information we can now sketch our graph so the right side of 2 is kind of like this correct so we could just go like this and sketch concave up function approaching positive infinity for x equals to 2 plus and 0 from positive side here it has to go from the origin right so and the concavity changes around at this point so let me approximately sketch like this. so this is concave down for us okay we say this is concave down and then it's concave up right so, and kind of going up like this do you see that so that is how the graph is going to be so it should be kind of like this local minimum at minus 2 concavity changing at that point so I will write this point as point of inflection which will be at minus 4 minus 1.9 and that is the minimum for us at minus 2 minus 1 over 8 right and that is the x and y intercepts and this is our vertical asymptote and then that is our horizontal asymptote y equals to 0. I hope with this you understand how to sketch graph of a function. So look at the equation itself. It gives you an idea, right, how to go about. Now, finding x and y intercepts is first thing. Then you can find asymptotes, behavior near the asymptotes, local maximum and minimum points, concavity, and thereby point of inflection. Once you have these things in place, you can sketch a neat curve to represent the graph of the given equation. I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.